When you look at an older generation, and a, a generation less experienced than you are with respect to social media and social advocacy, a generation not well versed in the challenges you're grappling with, but a generation that has survived, your mama's generation, your daddy's generation, your grandparents' generation, yea, even the generation of a few professors and a few deans. Or maybe like me, you look at somebody like Mary Ratliff and think about Dr. King and you say to yourself, I'm gonna be brave, I'm gonna be courageous, I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna fight, I am not gonna give up and never give in because I will stand on the side of justice no matter what, even if it costs me my life. A prophet who were he alive today would be in his 80s by the name of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, if a man has not found anything for which he's willing to die, he is not fit to live. There is a generation of older folks who gave their lives for what little we have. And I'll just tell you how I think about them. I ask myself this question. If they did all that they did with what little they had, why, why, why can't I do more with all that I've been given? It doesn't mean we don't question our elders. It doesn't mean we engage in some kind of generational deference. When you come to the table of truth, your truths have to stand on their own two feet. You may have tenure, you may have a social security check, but when it comes to the fact that African-American men are 21 times more likely to lose their lives at the hands of the police when it comes to the fact that there are 2.3 million Americans behind bars, 100 million Americans with some form of a criminal record, when it comes to the fact that we have a generation of young people who have been criminalized, when you enter that debate, it doesn't matter if you're the president of the NAACP. It doesn't matter if you're a United States senator. It doesn't matter if you're the CEO of a company. What does matter is do you have prophetic spirit and are you willing to make a prophetic sacrifice? That's where we are. We have to listen to one another. But it does not mean we have to grant one another automatic deference. President Exdale can tell you. Within the NAACP, we are a profoundly democratic organization. That means if I say something that doesn't quite hold true, I got some 15-year-olds and some 75-year-olds who will get in my face. And from talking to your president, I gather in, in the conversation that lasted over an hour, I think maybe you got in his face too. He lived to tell. <laughs> but the text also tells us that Isaiah, Isaiah, when he encountered the Lord in this vision, was reminded of his brokenness, his fragility, his woundedness. Isaiah says, I'm a man with unclean lips and I live among a people with unclean lips. That means we as prophets are not perfect. We as prophets have to have a certain moral humility. We as prophets have to come to an engagement recognizing that every claim has to be tested. Every moral assertion has to be tested. Oh, I'm not talking about the First Amendment. You can go over to the law school and hear about that. I'm talking about something more profound than that. It's called moral discourse. 
When you sit down with somebody that you violently are opposed to, who represents everything you stand against, and you decide to use one of the most powerful words in the vocabulary of our republic, love. 